Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. As I'm not recording this video at home, please forgive the background. After viewing the videos and reading the papers by Dr. David Sinclair, we started our NMN and resveratrol trial one year ago. I still remember after listening to all the talks by Dr. Sinclair, we were very excited about NMN and just could not wait for shipping and decided to take a three hour return bus journey to get our first bottle of NMN in Hong Kong. This costs 780 Hong Kong dollars, which is about 100 USD. So time flies. Now it is one hour, one year anniversary, and this is our first year report. First, a disclaimer. We are just sharing our experience and the protocols that we're using in our anti-aging journey. This video does not provide any medical advice. We have very briefly, why are we taking NMN? In mouse models, NMN has been shown to have a number of benefits, including improving physical and mental performance and extending health span. There are trials currently ongoing for humans, but at the moment, the only completed trial is on safety. We are following the progress of these trials and provide updates when we hear anything. We are hoping that these benefits will translate into humans. Let's see how we are going after one year. There have been a couple of studies that have shown age reversal in humans. The first of these used growth hormone with metformin and DHEA, and the second of which used only diet and lifestyle. Though neither used NMN, it does show that age can be reversed. But when we say age, what do we mean? We are referring to the biological age, not the chronological age. In this case, we are using epigenetic clocks to measure what a person's biological age is. We use EpiAge, which has a service that only requires a saliva sample, and there is a link with a 10% discount in the description. Here are my biological age measurements when compared to my chronological age. The top line is my chronological age, and the second line is my biological age. These are both shown on the left-hand axis. The lower line is the difference between them, shown on the right-hand axis. As this line shows the difference between my chronological age and the biological age, lower numbers are better. Here are the various NMN doses and formats that I have been taking. In the blue area, I was using powder and capsules with a starting dose of 150 milligrams up to 750 milligrams. I then used sublingual NMN at one gram for three month trial. We did have some lozenges left over, so that period actually extended beyond the three months. I'm now in the yellow area with enhanced absorption at 900 milligrams. You can see I started off at 50, which was eight years younger than my chronological age around when I started taking NMN. And in the last test, I was 46.23 at 13 years younger than my chronological age. Before we jump into my wife's age data, let's take a look at another possible effect of NMN. In mouse models, it has been shown that NMN can reverse age-induced infertility. There are two major studies on this topic, both published in Cell last year. This one was published in February, entitled NAD Plus Repletion Rescues Female Fertility During Reproductive Aging. The researchers included Dr. Lindsay Wu and Dr. David Sinclair. They showed that mice who had aged beyond their fertile period, when provided with low doses of NMN, had notably better egg quality and were able to give birth to offspring during a breeding trial. Another paper was published in August entitled Nicotinamide Mononucleotide Supplementation Reverses the Declining Quality of Maternal Aged Oocytes. It states that NMN supplementation improved the quality of the maternal aged eggs and provides a potential strategy to improve reproductive outcomes of women of advanced maternal age. According to the NHS UK, for most women the menopause starts between the ages of 45 and 55. My wife's period stopped last year before she took NMN. It also stopped for many of her friends who were the same age, so she thought it was normal. It was unexpected, but after taking NMN, her period came back. Not just this, it came back in a youthful way. She has been through the usual perimenopause stage symptoms, and then her period stopped. According to her, she feels like her period now is the same as when she was in her 20s, less menstrual cramp and period fatigue. We did not want to mention it in our earlier report as we wanted to wait longer to see if it really continues or it only came back for one or two months. Interestingly, it is continuing. A final note on this. After her periods are back to normal for a while, NMN seems to have the effect of prolonging them. 
So now her policy is to stop taking NMN when the period comes and then retake it when it has finished. And so far, this policy has been working well for her. As I mentioned in several videos before, my wife has a skin allergy, which she had before taking NMN. In these last few years, she has had rashes on her hands, which come and go. She hoped NMN may help, but it seems not. During COVID-19, her allergy has got worse. She is especially sensitive to the antiseptic spray, which many families use to spray their hands and shoes when they go into their flats. She gets headaches, dizziness and skin itchiness, even when she just smells the spray from our neighbours. It is serious enough that she needs to sit down and cannot stand. On top of that, we found that her skin rashes are getting worse, red and swollen, after she has eaten certain kinds of food as well. It seems that there are countless factors that contribute to her allergy. So she decided to start an elimination diet and also stop taking all supplements except vitamins B, C and D, and then to add them back one at a time. Let's see how she is doing in her biological age with all her inflammation and not taking NMN. Here we will talk about the difference between my wife's chronological age and her biological age. You can see on her first test she was 10.67 years younger, but in her next test she dropped to only 1.46 years younger, and then in the most recent test she was back to 4.05 years younger. You can also see the NMN format and dose that she was taking. Note that my wife did not take the first age test with me. That is why the graph starts at six months and she was taking NMN before the first test that she did. Between the six and the nine months, we are not sure whether her allergies accelerated her aging or not taking NMN may have also contributed. She restarted taking NMN a month before the last age test. Her allergic status was not much changed, although there seems no adverse effects after retaking NMN, and overall her biological age is still younger than her chronological age by four years, so she is feeling a bit better. In the lab test that we do, they also estimate your metabolic age. You can see here that for me, the metabolic age is in quite close agreement with my epi age. Now let's move on to some of the key blood markers. My overall cholesterol has come down to be in range and my total cholesterol to HDL ratio is now close to optimal. My LDL is out of range, but in our recent talk with Dr. Lusgarden and the video on his site, he pointed out that the data shows an LDL level of 140 being optimal for all cause mortality in men. I am therefore happy with this current value. My triglycerides have gone up over the year, so I would like to control them. I'm doing most of the things that should benefit triglycerides, but I've also increased my fiber and omega-3 intake. And here is my wife's numbers. Her LDL is good and has gone up during the period, while her LDL has gone down. Optimal LDL levels are different for women, and again, following Dr. Lusgarden's research, about 100 is optimal. Her triglycerides have come down and her triglycerides to HDL ratio has improved. So after one year of taking NMN, all these numbers are looking okay for both of us. And here are my liver test numbers. Uric acid is back above range. This may be because of NMN as B3 or niacin can be a cause of elevated uric acid. Apart from drinking some alcohol, I do not do the other things that would generally raise uric acid. The dip and rise of uric acid is also coincides with our stopping and then restarting celery seed extract. We have recently restarted with this and are now having more fiber in our diet and will aim to drink more water and see how this number is at the next checkup. AST and ALT are key enzymes in the liver and high levels of them in the blood may be a sign of liver damage. As one of the concerns with NMN is that it may deplete methyl groups and cause issues in the liver, there are numbers which we are closely watching. Overall, my AST and ALT ratio has improved to where it is now below one. Here are my wife's numbers. Her uric acid is also high, though less than it was. The comments on my uric acid levels also apply to her. She has seen improvements in her AST and AST to ALT ratio to where these are now in range. So for liver, we also seem to be okay, except that we need to keep an eye on the uric acid. Here is a summary of our physical measurements over the year. I have lost some weight and am now happy where I am. 
just need to put on some muscle. My wife has not lost much weight, but then she is underweight, so that is a good thing. We did change our scales in the middle of the year, which means that the muscle mass and bone mass numbers are not directly comparable. Here is the result of the blood pressure and resting heart rate. I'm glad to see a little progress on the blood pressure. These charts show our average resting heart rate. You can see that mine has improved a little over the period. Here is a tweet from Dr. Sinclair showing that he too watches his resting heart rate as one of the key metrics. Here he has reached a level of 49 beats per minute. We use Garmin watches to check our resting heart rate. I take mine after finishing my meditation in the morning. Here is a picture of my wife and my watches with some of our best values. We track our sleep using a free app, which is available for iOS and Android. My numbers are quite variable and generally not that good. For November, my average was 72%. I do not at the moment know why this is and it's something I need to investigate. My wife generally does better. Her average for November was 90%. Here are a couple of screenshots for our best results where my wife got a perfect 100%. On the exercise front, it has been a difficult year. For aerobic, we have been doing some running, but I am down from where I was in 2019, when I was at a VO2 max of 52. This was the best I have ever been since I started tracking, and it was just after I started taking NMN. As you can see, now I am at 45 and trying to increase this. My wife was at 47 when she last ran back in October. According to the Garmin database, her VO2 max is in the top 1% for her age and gender group. If any of you watched the recent video on our DNA testing, you will recall that her genes favour her cardio ability, and this result does seem to support that. For strength training, I was planning to do a 1 rep max measure, but after the interview with Professor Keith Barr, I will instead use his plan. For this, I will pick 5 exercises, and for each of them, choose a weight where I cannot quite complete 12 slow reps. When I can complete 12 reps, I will move up to the next weight and keep track of my progress. Here is my list of exercises, but at the moment the gyms are closed, so I will start as soon as they reopen. And this is the seven minute exercises, which we introduced in the nine month report. My wife continues to do these most mornings. No major changes to our eating habits, low carbs, no sugars, no highly processed foods. We continue with the restricted eating window. As I mentioned earlier, my wife started an elimination diet. She finally took a food intolerance test last month and has just received her report. Here is part of it. The items in red show the foods that she has sensitivities to and the number designating the level of that sensitivity. She seems to be sensitive to quite a lot. With this information, she can now really start her elimination diet without just guessing. We covered NMN earlier on the biological age slide. Here are the other supplements that we have taken. We have not taken all of them all of the time and the dose has varied, but this is the core set of supplements. As we mentioned, my wife has gone on an elimination diet and there are periods when she has not been taking supplements. On top of these, we also take various probiotics and protein and collagen after exercise. After listening to Dr. Lusgarten, I have reintroduced acacia soluble fiber and also dried parsley and celery seed extract as sources of epigenin, which inhibits CD38, a big user of NAD. We have links to all of the supplements in the description. We mentioned Jewel and Back in our earlier video about free apps to track and improve our mental well-being. If you want to find out more, please find the link above on the screen. Jewel and Back is a science-based game which has been shown to improve working memory you need to remember both location plus the sound of a square each time. My wife and I started just after taking NMN to measure our cognitive progress. My wife has made great progress here. The app has a screen which tracks your progress over time. When you start the, the game, the top level is 12. As she made it to level 13, now her screen shows up to 15 levels. In the last four months, she has typically played for about two minutes a day. It's interesting that when she's taking NMN, she can normally maintain her level. However, when she stops the NMN, she drops the game level all the time. So this is our hair report. You can see that my wife has improved her hair pore status. My wife has said that I seem to have more hair and the top of my hair has got darker. 
and I have found that my wife's hair seems to be more lustrous. Here is a section from the report where they are examining the health of the cuticle and you can see that I have gone from three to four stars. For skin and wrinkles I don't have much change but my wife said my skin does look tighter especially in the neck area. She also says that I sound younger when I'm talking. Dr David Sinclair took NMN for three years. He seems to have a lot less wrinkles now. I have only taken NMN for one year. Dr Sinclair also tweeted out his previous passport photo from a decade ago and the recent update. He does even look younger when compared to 10 years ago. After 10 years I will be 70 so there is hope that at the time I will look even younger than now. By the way he also tweeted out Tom Cruise photo from 25 years ago and now he is also looking really young. For my wife, she is amazed at the positive progress that she has made in both physical and mental functions within a year in the NMN trial. Of course, she is happy that her menopause has been reversed, as menopause age seems related to longevity. Later menopause seems likely to indicate a longer lifespan. For me, the journey has been very enriching. I've learned a lot of things and see so much possibility for the future. I feel really good and think that my physical fitness would be better if it was not for COVID-19, making it difficult to get outside and to go to the gym. We look forward to next year and plan to keep up the regular reports and add more ways of measuring our health. We would like to thank you all for following along with us and do hope that the information we provide is helpful to you. If you enjoyed this video and would like to continue to hear about our experiences, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. Also, please do hit the bell button and choose all for the notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.